Hello again. Today we're going to talk about craps. And craps is a exciting casino table game. It's been around for decades. It's typically played by multiple players. Obviously, there are two dice, and it's one of the few table games where the players play typically play standing up. The craps layout is complicated. There are a number of different wagers that can be made. Typically, there are multiple dealers that deal the game at the same time because of the complex nature nature of the game and how many different wagers you can make. There's only one shooter. Only one person will roll the dice at a time. And as we mentioned earlier, two dice are used. So this video is intended to be an introduction to craft. How to think about the game and how do we approach the game conceptually to understand what's happening and to calculate the house advantage. So I think the best way to think about house advantage in terms of craps is to consider the two dice. And frankly, the easiest way to approach it is to is to just let one of the dice be blue and the other die be red. Now, in a real game of craps, both dice are red, but obviously it's the same exact game if you make one red and one blue, or if you make one yellow and one purple. And by making one red and one blue, it's easier to understand what's happening in the game. So this would be an example of all the possible outcomes that you get for a roll uh, in the game of craps. There are six possible outcomes for the blue die, one through six, each equally likely. There are six possible outcomes for the red die. And hopefully what you can see, and I've color-coded it here so you can see it a little easier, is that seven, a roll of seven, or a sum of seven for the two die, is the most likely outcome. And seven is unique in that prior to rolling the two dice, I have a one in six chance of getting a seven. And if I roll the two dice and the blue die flies off the table and the red die is left there and I look down at the red die and I say, huh, it's a three. It actually doesn't matter what the red die is. There will always be a complementary value of the blue die so that I can get to seven. So even if I know what one of the two dice is, but not the other one, my chance of rolling a seven remains one in six. And that's the only total for which that happens to be true. And as you can see, seven is the most likely outcome of two dice. And in fact, in the game of craps, seven has a special meaning. It is tends to be the value that ends a game of craps. It ends the role of the shooter. Often the table will be betting with the shooter and a game of seven ends the, ends the game in a manner in which the shooter does not win. So with an outcome of seven, you may, may hear a lot of groans from the craps table. Let's look at one of the bets. Uh, that is a, a common bet that's advertised by the stick man. It's called any seven. And basically it's a one roll bet. You're betting on the very next roll, whether a seven will occur. Well, we can look at this grid and see how often does a seven occur. And we've talked that it's one in six, but the reason we know it's one in six is there's 36 possible outcomes. There's six outcomes for the blue die times six outcomes for the red die. So there's 36 entries here in this table. And six of those are seven. In other words, six of those win. And the other 30 lose. So our probability of winning here is 6 in 36, or 1 in 6. We can then calculate the, what we call the expected outcome. And what that means is, if I make a wager of 1 unit, and my 1 unit might be $1, my 1 unit might be $100 or $25. It's just I'm just wagering a unit. Conceptually, I'm making a wager of 1 unit. What's my expected outcome? Well, I have a one-sixth chance of winning four units because it pays four to one. And I have a five-sixth chance of losing my one unit that I wagered. So if I add these together, overall, my expected outcome is minus one-sixth of a unit. In other words, on average, for each one unit I wager on any seven, I can expect to lose one-sixth of a unit. And so the house advantage is obviously the opposite of that. From the player's perspective, if the player expects to lose one-sixth of the unit, then the house expects to win one-sixth of the unit. 
And indeed, the house advantage is one-sixth, or expressed as a percentage of the wager, 16.7%. And 16.7% is a fairly healthy house advantage in terms of the overall spectrum of games that you can play in a casino. Let's take a look at another wager on the craps layout, and that's known as place 10. This is not a single roll wager. This wager functions a little differently. If I put a wager on place 10, it will pay 9 to 5 if a 10 is rolled before a 7. And it turns out that all the other rolls, 3, 8, 12, 4, all of those other rolls just don't count. The only two rolls that count for this place 10 wager are 10 and 7. If the 10 comes up first, I win the bet. I win 9 to 5. If the 7 comes up first, I just lose my wager. So the only rolls that we need to consider for place 10 are outcomes of a 7 that you can see on this diagonal or an outcome of 10. All of these other totals, they just don't matter. They don't affect the outcome of this wager. So there are only nine possible roles that affect the outcome. Six sevens and three tens. And of those nine, three are winners, the three tens. So my probability of winning this bet is one in three. And again, let's look at the player's expected outcome. The expected outcome is I have a one-third chance of winning. And if I win, I'll win nine-fifths of my unit that I bet. Uh, but I have a two-thirds chance of losing, and if I lose, I'll simply lose my bet, minus one. And if I just do this calculation, I end up minus 6.67%, so the house advantage is positive 6.67%, which you can see is substantially less than the any 7 wager. We've looked now at a one-roll wager, and which was the any 7 bet, which the outcome is dictated by the very next roll. And we've also looked at the place 10 wager, which is not necessarily determined on the very next roll. It may be, but it's a wager on that you'll roll a 10 before a 7. Now we want to combine those two concepts into what's known as the main wager on craps. It's called the pass line wager. And if we look at the pass line wager, essentially what the pass line wager is, is that if the shooter rolls a 7 or 11 on the very first roll, the pass line wager wins. If the shooter rolls a 2, 3, or 12 on the very first roll, the pass line wager loses. Otherwise, otherwise the, the roll, which all that's left that's possible, is 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10. Otherwise, the Whatever is rolled, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, or 10, becomes the point. It's known as the point, and the point must be re-rolled before a 7 in order to win. Now, that sounds pretty complicated, but the way we're going to break down this wager is we're going to look at it in parts that make it manageable. And here's a table that breaks down this wager. So if the first roll is a 2... And the chance of that from the table, I can read there's only one way to get a 2. There's a 1 in 36 chance of getting a 2. But if the first roll is a 2, I lose. If the first roll is a 3, I lose. We're going to skip 4, 5, and 6 for a moment. If the first roll is a 7, I automatically win. If the first roll is an 11, I automatically win. And if the first roll is a 12, I lose. So anything else establishes the point, which is 4, 5, 6, or 8, 9, 10. So let's look at, for example, 4. So I've established the point as a 4, and now to win this pass line wager, I have to re-roll that 4 before a 7. Well, I can look at my chart here, my table, and see how often that happens. 4, 4, 4. There's three ways to get a 4. There are six ways to get a 7. So my chance of winning if I've established the point as a 4, is 3 out of 9, which happens to be the same probability we just looked at for place 10. And you can see down here, if the point is established as a 10, the probability of winning, the conditional probability of winning, is the same, 3 and 9. 
And I'll leave it to you to look at if the point was a five or a six to show that the probability of winning the conditional probability then is four and 10 or five and 10. So if I multiply these two columns together to get a product, that will tell me what my uh, partial probability chance is of winning based on each of these initial rolls. And so, for example, let me look at the seven. I have a one in six chance of rolling that seven, which I win immediately. So my partial probability of winning from the seven is one sixth. And these are the values for the other possible initial rolls. And if I add all those up together, I'm going to get my overall probability of winning this game if I'm a pass line better. And it turns out it's this value here of 0.492929. So the expected outcome for me is I have a 0.49293 chance of winning one unit and one minus that. In other words, about a 50.7% chance of losing my one unit. So the overall expected outcome is minus 1.41%. Corresponding house advantage is 1.41%. And 1.41% for the pass line in craps, and the calculation for what's known as the combat in craps is exactly the same. It's 1.41%. That is a pretty low house advantage in the grand scheme of things. So if you're a craps player, you probably want to play on the pass line or the combat. You want to make wagers and craps that have a low house advantage. You want to stay away from things like any seven or any craps or bets that in particular the stick man is really promoting. He promotes bets that have a large house advantage. The other thing to look for in craps, if it's offered, and it's pretty common, is if you bet on the pass line or the come bet, the house will often give you odds. So if the point is established, for example, as a, a four, and we just looked at our chart, and when the point is established at a four, we can look at our chart and see that, because there are three fours and there are six sevens, if the point is established as a four, I have a one in three chance of winning. So true odds, if there was no house advantage, would be two to one. And so when a house offers free odds, that means they're allowing you to make an additional wager after your pass bet or your come bet, with no additional house advantage. So that's something that actually doesn't hurt you or benefit you. It's just a way of getting a wager out where there is no house advantage. And so if you're trying to minimize the house advantage, that would be another wager that you should definitely look at. In class. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to, to leave them on this video and I will try to respond. Thank you.